So I also knew that for me to really see a diverse, uh, is that my ride? Uh, for me to get a diverse group of people, uh, we've been all over Israel. But then we came up to Ariel University because it's unique. Uh, first off, as you can see, it's a prison and nobody saw that coming. Uh, so many of the students that come here think that they're coming for education. They haven't let them out in six years. Uh, but these three have escaped, apparently, and so they're gonna try to get the rest of them out. Bef but before they do, I corralled them and said, let's talk. And here's why. What is unique about this university is that Muslims, Christians, and Jewish students all go here together, yes? And you study together, uh, you, you know, you probably have lunch hang together, out. you hang out, you have fun, uh, every, is there, am I missing, uh, is there other religious uh, affiliate, uh, Druze, I don't know, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. Druze are here, leprechauns maybe, do we have any of those, nothing, <laughs> unicorns are here, I don't know, I just thought, well, who knows, it's a, obviously it's a magical university, so I thought perhaps you had something. So one of the first things I realized by, here, move over here a little bit, because I don't want them not to be able to see you. One of the things I realized is that, that the technology that's coming out of Israel is, is amazing. You guys are uh, so advanced. This is up on a hill. I'm wondering when you're going to start working on the let's warm it up technology, because I'm freezing. Yeah, me too. So it's <laughs> very good. So I would love you, if you could get on that, next year I'd like this to be 10 degrees centigrade higher. Can you do that? You've already have your sunglasses on. You were anticipating this. You saw this coming. She doesn't even put them on her eyes. She just wants to take care of her head. That's good. Uh, what have you come here to study? What's your name? Let's start there. Uh, Amani. Amani? Amani. Amani. Okay. Uh, Let me shake your hand. Am I allowed to do that? Okay. I didn't, want, I didn't know if it's a cultural thing. No. She has to, you know, run away. I don't know. But I'm allowed to, I'm allowed to touch you on the shoulder. I can do that. You never know. I'm in another country, the United States. We don't know what we're doing. We just make stuff up as we go. Where are you from? Kfarkara, if you know. It's north. I'll take your word for it because I have no idea where that is. It, it, so maybe she's making it up. It's we don't a small know. village. You, uh, probably you don't know it. So once you left, there was nothing left? It was just you? It's just you. She comes there. I'm back. Where are you from? <laughs> From Jat village. Okay, and uh, I didn't mean to leave you out. Where are you from? Arabi village. Ah, Arabi village. So lots of villages. And what are you studying when you come to Arabia? Uh, economy and uh, criminology. Economy, I'm sorry, I didn't understand. And? Criminology. Criminal organs. Okay, so. Hello. Criminology. Oh, criminal. I'm sorry. I thought you were going to see if criminals' organs were different than <laughs> regular people's. <laughs> Yes, because it's like their hearts are very small. We need to enlarge them and then they'll be nice again. So cr criminology, so that's good. So what kind of field do you want to go into? A, a clinic or clinica? Oh, okay. Like uh, like a, a detective? Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Something like this, yeah. Okay, all right, great. Well, that's good. That's a good thing. She's, she's like apologizing. Maybe I should have chose something different. No, you're doing perfect. <laughs> what about you? What are you studying? Industrial engineering. Oh, so you're like super smart. You can say that. I did. <laughs> you're a nerd, aren't you? I am. I don't know. You're a nerd. It's okay. Okay, okay. I admit it. I admit it. <laughs> but nerds rule the world now. It's cool to be a nerd. Yay. Yes. Uh, and, and you are Muslim? Yep. Do you speak Arabic? Of course. Okay. <laughs> now she's mad at me. Uh, what? So, so what is nerd in Arabic? Do you have an equivalent word? Um, um, we we use the the Jewish word to say it in Arabic. Oh, so good. Hukhnun. 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 Yeah. We use it in Arabic. <laughs> okay. As well, they they use the uh, uh, words in Arabic. They use it in Jewish. So see the Hebrew. the Jewish and Muslim students are always sharing words. They're already cooperating, even in their even in, in their, their talking, their speech, and you're studying what? Electrical engineering. Electrical engineering, all right. So that's going to be exciting. Not a nerd. Oh, no, he's a hack nerd. You're a hack nerd. I know you are. Uh, so when you guys came to this university, were you aware of the, uh, the fact that they were mixing these groups together uh, on purpose, trying to, to help people learn to, to get along, or did you just come for just because it... It was a place that had what you were looking to study. Well, really, I uh, don't have any idea oh. about the, the university. For oh. The 
So you got here and next thing you know, why are these people yeah. here? Make yeah. them go. I, I'm, I'm looking for leprechauns and I don't see them. But you got here, you found out, oh, well, there's different people that I didn't yeah, know here. Right. And was at first, were you a little nervous or was like, no, nah, I'm all right? Uh, at first I been nervous, yeah, mm. uh, but I... So, and, and what was the, what was the most, um, I don't know, what was the most interesting thing you, you learned when you began to sort of get used to this about yourself? that maybe you didn't know until you were put in a position where you had to work with people and realize, oh, they're just like me. Well, no, what? You know the other side. You kind of oh, good. Are you, are you a ventriloquist? That's amazing. I talked to her and she came yeah. out of that. <laughs> she comes from a magic village. All right, I'm going to get back to you, but go. And you had a great, and I'm not, I didn't want to get place, in front of you. In my village, I don't uh, uh, communicate with uh, Jewish people, yeah. not, not also Christian people. So, so they're not even there, or you they just... Don't, they don't live there. Okay. They some you know, place, near. near places, you know, okay. like that. And uh, when I come here, I have to to know yeah. uh, many things about uh, other people, I, 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 how I can treat them yeah. to to respect other religions. Now, did you know they, that, that it was a mixture like that when you came, or did you find out once you got here? I found it here. Now, did it? Did you feel in a way like, hey, I didn't want that at first, and then you kind of realized, oh. No. Uh, you didn't bother you, or were you a little nervous at first because you weren't sure? I was nervous. Was, yeah. Uh, so well, much what nervous. did you thought possibly would this could be the result? Uh, when you come to settlement, like um, Muslim people, Palestinian people, there's a um, conflict mm. that when you want to, to, to to be the one that is uh, different yeah. from others. Yeah. This is something like uh, you know, you, you have to be the different people and to take the, the your chance, your, uh, your stand, you yeah. know what to say. And then I came here, I see other people, Jewish people, we live the, together, yeah. eat together, play together, learn yeah. together. And many ideas, many ideas and many uh, things Will it be changed? So, we, be, so be, Change. before you came here, what did you think of, when you thought of a Jewish person, what did you think they were like? What was the characteristics that you thought a Jew was? I don't, uh, I don't think about him like uh, uh, people, n not mm -hmm. good people, something like that. Um, uh, it's an ideology is, is a Different, uh, m many, many, many things that I could don't take you. This, no, I live in my village. My village I, with my dying. traditional uh, things, with my, uh, <laughs> 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 with, uh, with my life. When I have to to change my life, yeah. I have to, to do things. And uh, what? How how much time did it take? before you realized, I like these guys. What, what, I mean, was it quick? Did it take a lot of time or was it pretty quick, pretty Very fast? Quick. Yeah, and you go, so were you surprised I by because, your own because, because realization that maybe you were prejudiced and never knew? I mean, did it kind of surprise yourself yeah. and, and then yeah. go, wow, okay, yeah. I, I, I'm glad I'm being I a better person. I was surprised oh. because uh, many things, I, 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 the people that I meet here, people that want to learn want to to give to to share something something with people yeah and this is what was mm, surprise yeah we see in news you see yeah. uh, a lot of places in Israel that not uh, good to be there yeah and here in settlement in Ariel I love to be here now do you think that uh, and I'll let any of you ask uh, answer that would like to do you think that by living like this and learning to just realize everybody has similar uh, desires and wants and that you become friends and now you're making friends with people you wouldn't, normally wouldn't have thought so, do you think that would also be possible to, to allow them, let's say, when you go back to your village, would you still be able to visit each other? Would you be able to keep that or would it, or would it yeah. still be kind of problematic? I don't know how that works. No, that, of course. That's yeah? It's it gonna be a problem. Uh, so, they w they would you could go to visit them, or they would visit you, and they would feel yeah, comfortable. And but prior to here, that would never have happened. 
yeah. prior it's, to meeting it's, them and ma building that relationship, you probably would never would have had a Jewish friend. I have a Jewish friend. But but be, but before you came here, do you uh, see what I mean? Maybe no, you never uh, would have. Ba, where by village? Yeah. Uh, we are uh, live with a Jewish people. Oh, you people do. Okay, we, so you've already had this experience. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but uh, here, uh, since she she came here, she, she's tried to coexist with the Jewish people, and she find that it's possible. But I thought she said that no. she already had Jewish friends no, no, in her no. village. No, uh, it's um, a Jewish uh, but, um, at north, and um, so different that. Um, uh, Jewish here. Yeah. Um, they have different ideas about about uh, Arabs and Muslims here uh, in Israel. I think she's tried to. Um, for me, since I was 15, I'm trying to do a coexistence mm. uh, programs, uh, and by coming here to university to Ariel University, I didn't count it, count it like a, one of my a, coexistence programs. Yeah. I choose a, Ariel as a university, at n not as a, a village. Uh, um, I don't know a village out of a, a, in the West Bank, you can say. So a, a, I found out that there are even here there is a coexist yeah. a co co coexisting between a, all of a, the religions that a, live here in in Israel so and didn't you say in a result of, as a result of this you thought uh, you had an idea that maybe there should be kind of an exchange could tell tell us about that um, you know I don't know if you if you know uh, that uh, every university here in, in Israel has a, a, a Jewish and Muslims and Christians students that study there but uh, they also have an exchange programs with other universities in the world so here in Ariel it's j that just doesn't exist we are trying uh, with uh, Nicole to to make that happen now the fact that you already have all three religions going here why wouldn't they have had a an exchange program it seems like like it would have been more natural since you're already you're already working together because it's a Ariel it's university it's it named it's it was named a university just two years ago it was before that it was a college oh yeah so I think that things like that are in progress mm. uh, and it's gonna take time didn't you say you also worked with a, with a camp that uh, that the Jewish and, and uh, uh, Muslim, or, uh, Muslim kids came together for yeah. a few weeks to, to yeah, get? Yeah, I'm. Uh, I was a counselor of a a, a group a, of a ten uh, kids, ten Arab uh, Muslim kids uh, from Israel, and ten Jewish kids. We went together to Camp Shumria in uh, in Canada to to try to coexist with each other. Mm. A, you know, uh, we thought that if if it starts from the uh, uh, younger generations, it's gonna be a, a effective in the future. Yes. Uh, yeah. So it's one of the coexisting yeah, programs that. Yeah, that's I good. Had. Now, d are your parents also kind of have that mentality of, of wanting to work together, or is this something you're gonna kind of teach them a little uh, in a way? Uh, my father, my parents is. Uh, is surprised that I have uh, this something, but my my father work uh, like a doctor in a oh. hospital. That his day is uh, um, mostly is full with Jewish people, yeah. something like that. Yeah. But uh, here, here, the, uh, when I go from my home to to my university to learn, I have to 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 do m m uh, something like. Uh, to share people, uh, to to know uh, about something here, and I have to I have to communicate with the Jewish people, and, mm -hmm. when, and when this uh, point will get together, you can see the the the, the, um, the people, the other side, yeah. that uh, treat with you like the same. Yeah, uh, you are the same. You are right. not afraid to be here. Not afraid to. To to say what I'm thinking about you, what yes. you, 
we, we respect it. Yeah. We, we have to respect the other side. When, yes. when we have respected, uh, everything is go okay. So do you feel like Muslims are not treated fairly in the news and in the media as to how they're represented? It's the negative media, yeah. Okay. Now, how do, you, how do you think the West sees Muslims based on what we see in the news? Okay. okay. Now, d within your own community, because obviously the majority of Muslims aren't terrorists, <laughs> so within your own community, with, when you're amongst yourselves, so you're comfortable and say, do, do you talk about, man, I'm sick of being betrayed like, the, you know, I, I mean, this is not who we are, this is a fringe group. Every group has their crazy people, and there's nothing you can do to, to stop it. Uh, have, you, have you ever talked within your own community about is there something we could do to try to tell our own story and take back the narrative from uh, whatever their agenda is to portray you as terrorists and to portray uh, Israelis uh, as, as bigoted as well? That, that, I'm sure you're finding out that's not who they are either. So. Have, have you ever considered how that might be changed, or do you think it's just going to take younger generations teaching the next one and the next until it just is weeded out? What would you think is, is going to make a difference in that? I think it's really hurt Muslims to hear that uh, uh, everywhere, uh, when you hear a terrorist uh, uh, um, action in the world, they blame Muslims all the time, but but Islam is is not that religion that uh, no. uh, you know. There is no religion that uh, uh, looks about killing. The yeah, that that uh, Encourage. that encourage a, a people to go kill and go uh, I don't know destroy things okay, so when so you so and you guys are spokesmen for your religion that you're that you care about and it matters to you so you can educate us so what do these this small group uh, of terrorists what is it that they're using to justify that? Now, they, they say it's in the Quran, they don't say it is. What are they saying that allows them to feel that they can do this? I is think that they are, a, they are not Islam. Okay. They are just a... a yeah, they are just using the name of Islam to do what, the, what they are doing. A but they would claim the Quran gave easy? them this... This, this directive? This, uh, uh, from my belief, uh, I think it's all wrong, and I d don't believe any of this. Okay. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, uh, there is something hidden behind all this mess. Uh. Mm. Okay. Well, I, I, I guess if there was one thing that you would want the West to know about Muslims that you want to tell them from your heart, as regular people that just want to live a, a safe and healthy life, uh, that we don't understand about you, what would it be? We are a peaceful people, for sure. We are, a, doesn't encourage a, a killing people or, a, a, I don't know, do a, actions like a, a destroying and we are peaceful people, we want to live in peace. We, we love uh, each other, we are human beings after all. Mm. So. Okay. Well, I want to say thank you for taking your time and being with us. I'm going to get, let you get back to breaking out your friends. Uh, and uh, hopefully uh, a year or two from now, we'll see you again, and you'll have new friends, and they'll keep generations like this will happen until eventually we'll change the world single-handedly. I'll be dead, but you guys will have a great life, because I'll be old. We hope. Oh, yes. Thank you. Oh, Harry, Hi there. pleasure to meet you. I told you specifically, don't dress up. But no, you, just, you, you scientists can't help yourselves, can you? Indeed. You, you go for it. Uh, what you said you had to show me was unique to a lot of the universities that you've been in and so forth. What would that be exactly? Well, what we're trying to do here is we, we're using a particle accelerator which has been converted into a free electron laser. Mm. And we're using it as a very wide band source of um, lasing radiation, mm -hmm. which we can use to, which we're using for a number of applications. Mm. At the moment, we're running tests on lung cancer oh. and uh, remote power beaming. Mm. So that's when you want to transfer 
wirelessly power to a distant source. And the beauty of this system here, which is fairly unique, it's, it's, it was originally quite an old particle accelerator, and we gave it new life okay. by turning it into a free electron laser. Okay. And now, are particles that big? Now, no, uh, it's... Because uh, it's that seems like a gigantic particle. That's more like a boulder, I'm thinking. Yeah. It, so, why does it need to be that big? Is it generating so much energy that... I mean, I'm not, you know, I'm not a physician. Phys yeah. I'm not, I can't even say it. That's how bad I am. I'm not a physicist. Tell me about That's it. That's a great question. So when we want to, in the future, use the research we're currently doing and make it applicable, say, in industry or in uh, hospitals, yeah. we'll use other devices, which are called gyrotrons, which are much smaller. Mm -hmm. And as a result, they have a strong inter certain frequencies have a very strong interaction, which mm -hmm. means it's possible yeah. to kill off certain cells or switch on and switch off certain processes. Yeah. And we're able to generate, we're able to really finely tune what frequency we produce in a way that most other systems can't. Okay. Can you kind of show me a little bit about how it works? And do we need to wear a mask? No, no, no. Can I wear one anyway? You can. Okay. So if you'd show me over here. Okay, so basically the action begins here at the cathode uh -huh. where we generate an electron cloud by heating up, heating up our thermionic cathode. Now you said cathode, not catheter. No, it yes. is different. Okay. Cathode. Okay. And the electrons are focused and accelerated into the main, into the main sort of this big yellow thing. But it starts there. It starts there, yeah. So is it just contained in some kind of petri dish? How do, where uh, does the particle originate? Uh, the electrons are un kept under vacuum. Okay. Because they wouldn't travel very far. Now where do you capture a, an electron initially? In the jungle? Uh, I don't know how we do that. Well, that's, are that's, they just in the you, universe and you oh, just, they oh, just okay. show up? Yeah, great question. Whenever you heat up a metal, you get a mission of electrons. It's... Um, that's a law of the universe. Okay. So we heat up the metal to around 1,200 degrees, and we Any get a cloud of electrons. Any specific type of metal works best? That's, uh, that's, we've got a hybrid metal uh, cathode. I can't remember the material, but you could do it with magnesium mm. or tungsten. Mm. So once we've done that, we accelerate through a small potential the electrons until they enter into the yellow structure. Yes. And there's a beam line. Okay. Which they enter. Now is it pressurized or it's just trying yeah, to keep it from escaping? Well, as it's an electrostatic accelerator and there's a voltage in the center of 1.4 megavolts, mm -hmm. yeah, the, you have to prevent electrical discharges. Okay. So the way to do it is to have a pressurized gas uh -oh. inside. What kind of gas? that we use a mixture of nitrogen and carbon dioxide. Perfect. And that suppresses the electrical discharges. I see. Now, if I open that, what hmm. would happen? Well, you couldn't at the moment because it's a high, you got to depressurize the inside. Okay. But if I opened it because it was depressurized, hmm. got in, you shut it and turned it back on, what would happen to my body? Uh, you'd get an electric shock. Like bad one? Yep. Like I'd be dead? Yep. And then could you use the remains to do more experiments? Um. So, so <laughs> my, just from a scientific perspective, why waste the corpse? So, so what I, as you know, you know I should take this up, mm. I think it's impolite to keep your face mask down in a laboratory if I'm not mistaken. I know there's etiquette. Yeah. Uh, so one of the things that we have discovered as we see, and, and the, the amount of research, this is what's blowing me away, because I'm from the United States, so we always thought we were pretty good at stuff. The amount of technological, tech, I didn't realize I was going to have to use English the whole time. Mm -hmm. uh, usually I say that in Swahili. The technological advances that are coming out of Israel is, as a matter of fact, I'm going to be done, uh, is stunning. Uh, it it's almost uh, seems to be unprecedented for the amount of uh, uh, unique uh, products and research uh, elements that are coming out of the small country in so many fields. Yeah. Uh, but because of uh, the BDS movement, and you're from England, mm -hmm. so I'm sure you're familiar with it because it's all over Europe. Mm -hmm. um, what, I, what I'm wondering is what, 
kind of effect would happen uh, to Israel, uh, to a university who needs research grants, who needs uh, other fields of research around the world to uh, cooperate so you can combine mm. your information and, and just get places faster. Who would be most affected? You and your little desire to be a doctor? Israel, mm. who's this terrible, you know, apartheid state that must be subdued? Mm. Or would we truly be watching uh, uh, the destruction of, uh, of, of a lot of potential uh, help around the world? Well, I think it's a case of uh, you get most done when people work together. Yeah. And if you've got a few people in a group, yeah. say we've got the world scientific community, yeah. and you've got to say a, a number of people who won't get along, and they're having a big argument, everyone will suffer because there's, it, I, my guess is there's a lot of Jewish scientists around the world who will then stop cooperating, you know, not just, not just yeah. from Israel, will then stop co cooperating with other just scientists. Just solidarity or, yeah. Yep, and uh, that, that would, neg I think that would negatively impact uh, a, a lot of important cooperation that goes on. Yeah, I suppose if we took the annals of, of uh, scientific uh, people uh, throughout, let's say, say the last hundred years, mm. and listed them all together in all the fields, mm. and then said, now let's remove all the Jewish ones, mm. there might be one guy left. It would be less, it'd be less <laughs> progress. So, so what I'm trying to get at is, I think in sometimes in this very myopic, politically charged world that mm. seems to care more about its ideology than the big picture, um, this, uh, what seems to be an incredibly irrational attack on Israel, really uh, is costing everybody. I'm talking about worldwide. I, I just don't understand. I, I just wasn't sure if it was something that within your community you felt that. Well, I think, firstly, people in the hard sciences are less swayed by emotional, irrational arguments. Oh, good. And so I think, on the whole, they're less likely to be swept along with this. Okay, good. Uh, I hope that's at least what I've felt so far. And I think it, it, can only, it can only do harm because it's a matter of the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. And if they take away uh, a part of the scientific community. Yeah. They're taking away a lot of, um, they're literally, it's more than the individual scientists they're knocking yes. out. They're really setting things back. And you're, you're from London. Yeah. Maybe we'll just walk a little bit further here. You're from London. Uh, why did you choose to come here? Uh, well, uh, I, I'm Jewish. I made Aliyah. That's, I moved here and I, did my PhD here. Mm. It was a very natural move. Okay. And what would you want to tell uh, the West that may not always get the pure facts on Israel and so forth? What would you say, lastly, um, to the scientific community around mm. the world as to uh, what, what, do, what losses do you think could be, would be incurred? if Israel was not allowed to continue to have its fun, uh, funding mm. placed into it so it can move forward. Well, it's... And it's, you don't have to be yeah. humble. You yeah. know what's really happening here, and if, it's, and if it matters, yeah. then people should know. Well, it's, it's taking the side, going with BDS is taking the side of, I'd say, people who don't build mm. scientific institutions mm. and don't research, Okay, and that will and that will negatively impact them mm. in the long run. In the long run. Well, you know, if there's anything about scientists, we know they're pragmatic. It's, it's, if it works, let's just go that direction and, oh, yeah. and try to go beyond those uh, ideologies and stick with what can be helpful. Thank you so much. Pleasure. How, how soon until you get your doctorate? I hope in the coming months. I'll give you it right now if you want it. <laughs> just give me an IOU, something. Can I write him up something? Do we have a diploma somewhere? I'll do my best. But it's Very pleasure good. to meet you. You yeah. have great work here. Thanks. All right.
That's nice. You are, you are here in a, in a targeted drug discovery lab. Yes. Uh, I'm Professor Gary Gellerman. Yes, and I'm not. I have no professorship. Uh, I'm a layman. Okay. You're going to have to walk me through this. And nobody's perfect. I, that's perfect. true. So anyway. Uh, You're growing corks. Yeah. We, in this lab, are working with five PhD students developing a targeted delivery uh, for a cancer research. Okay. So what we actually do we're uh, acting as a professional intermediate, like accountants. We want to put money in the pocket. Okay? Yes, yes. How we do it? We take a, a certain um, uh, cocktail, which is very toxic. Cocktail is a, is a combination of drugs. Usually it's administrated against the cancer. Uh, uh, AIDS. No, no, cancer. Oh. It also can be applicable mm. in AIDS, but my research in I see. In cancer. I see. So uh, you, you, you take a, a certain uh, cocktail which is extremely to toxic and not tolerable usually. Um, and we connect it through special platform which, is, which was developed here to the given carrier. The carrier is something that uh, the big molecule like, like a protein, like an antibody, like a peptide uh, that can break us specifically uh, to, the, uh, uh, to the cancer cells, the target site and then they release the payload. Okay. Okay. So by mm, uh, mm, uh, making this conjugate that consists of the uh, therapeutic cocktail, the platform that was developed here in Israel, and the carrier that can bring us specifically to the cancer cells, we develop uh, 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 targeted therapeutics that can be administrated to enormous uh, numbers of uh, different cancers. Yes. That can be um, <coughs> solid uh, cancers, uh, can be hematopoietic cancers. Now, is this kind of newer technology? It's a new technology. So, so how long has it existed? And about two years, something okay. like that. We are going to go get into animal models. Okay. Uh, so they, they still haven't for started the, the for, humans, but... For evaluating the efficacy mm -hmm. and uh, toxicity. Uh, we have some preliminary data that uh, it's quite promising. Oh, good, good. So, is there a specific type of cancer that this would be more we, effective, or we are working cancer? on solid uh, cancers: the, the prostate cancer, lung cancer, uh, and pancreatic cancer, and uh, um, many other okay. solid cancers. So, it's yes. um, <coughs> it's interesting why because we 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 are uh, utilize we are taking advantage of overexpression on certain receptors then that um, are um, in, in cancer cells in comparison to the normal cells. Okay. So the, the solid tumors, they are already overexpressed. Mm -hmm. So we, we, we basically don't care what is the solid tumor. I never like, I could care less okay. about those, yes. So uh, it, can, it can work on majority of the solid tumors. This now, is technology. Now why has no one else uh, come up with this uh, till now? Did they not see the uh, the need to do it? And you were sort of conceptualizing it's this a, could be helpful. It's a it's a good question. That's the only kind when I you, use. When you invent that. something, anybody comes to saying why nobody why you why nobody did it before? Yeah. So I, I don't know what I can yeah. tell that uh, all the world is working on this kind of technology, but today they can uh, link only one drug, not a cocktail. Mm. So this platform that we developed here. Uh, enables uh, not only the delivery mm. of the of the uh, cocktail, which consists of three different drugs, to the target. Also, the controlled release of these drugs, so we wow. can tune these drugs, because each drug has a yeah. different um, a release regime. Yes. Now, and this uh, is extremely important because we have to catch the very narrow therapeutic window of oh. the uh, of the releasing the payload inside the cancer cells, and not in the benign issue. Oh. So that's why uh, this platform plays a huge role yes. in the delivery of the cocktail. Okay, and this would apply to much, m once you get this, you know, technology down, uh, not, I, I'm guessing that it could also apply to other ways of delivering drugs, not always just of for course, cancer. Of course, AIDS uh, can be useful for AIDS, for uh, Parkinson. We can, it can be helpful for pathing the BBB, for uh, brain tumors and so on. So, so all of this Alzheimer. was... All of this was intrinsic to this university. Did you have research grants? Did yeah. other people come in and try to participate yeah. in this? We or you guys did it from whole cloth? It works like that. Because I'm the chemist, 
and uh, every, it's, you know, uh, today the chemistry as chemistry is not the frontier science you know today the biology immunology all these ologies are yeah. uh, the frontier science yeah. but everybody need chemists yes that's so right. we, we invent something that is useful for many technologies yeah. in the frontier science yes. so we collaborate with many universities right. Well, as you know, because we were concerned, the, the, the it's, reason it's like it's like a, a certain a part of the engine that is useful in many machines. Right, right. No, no, it's versatile and and is really uh, the type of technology that the entire world will need, the entire world will use. It will save lives. It will. It will. Who knows how far that will go to exactly. to changing humanity? Exactly. And yet, and yet, there are people in in the world who have this issue with with Israel and this BDS movement and suddenly they decide because of their perspective uh, of, of Israel uh, that they are going to boycott they're going to uh, maybe uh, cut off research funds they're going to uh, try to discourage uh, other universities to yeah. cooperate with your yeah. you know tell me how that would affect not just you guys, but uh, what the world will need out of what you're yeah. creating. First of all, we develop here that can be useful for everybody. Yeah. Uh, regardless to religion, okay, Muslims, yeah. Christians, Jews, doesn't right. matter, okay, blacks, white, whatever, yeah. okay. Uh, to my opinion, the old days, Michael, it just um, will be harmful not only uh, uh, for me, they will, it acts not only against me, against the whole humanity, it doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. uh, to, to stop, to bicycle, yeah. to uh, uh, to harm something that uh, you know r relates to science. Yeah. This is the pure science. We, we are trying to heal people, yeah, not right, to kill right, people. Right. So why we should we bicycle? Yeah. The last now thing, here, yeah. by the way, here in our university, we have something like uh, nine to ten percent of uh, Arab students. Yes. Yeah, Arab students uh, studying here. Uh, they're given the same access to all the all the completely yeah. the same access. Yeah. The same rise, the same everything. Yeah. Now we are also in a unique place, the West Bank. So you also, uh, unfortunately, uh, because you just went into your science, but because politics seems to always uh, get uh, involved in things. Uh, so let's say that the BDS created even more momentum, and let's say this two-state solution came to a reality. You just told us that what's happening here right now is probably down the road will save millions of lives. Suddenly, two states. What happens to this universe? Uh, according to uh, government uh, uh, plans, uh, the Ariel will, will stay in the in, in, in state of Israel, not in the West Bank. But what I can tell you, we can, uh, we can lose a lot of uh, students here because uh, there are many students from the from the settlements, from the from uh, uh, from the places uh, around the Ariel, they will not come to study in, in, in this university. And they are very smart, they are very skilled, very good students. And I will tell something else. I think we have an inspiration from the place, specific place that Ariel is situated. We are 10 minutes from Shiloh. Mm. Shiloh is a um, um, is a spiritual was a spiritual center of the. Uh, Biblic significance for the history of the Jewish people. Um, um, uh, during the uh, the period that the Joshua entered to Israel, and the land was um, uh, divided among the twelve, twelve um, tribes, <coughs> Tawarnak was uh, was uh, situated in Shiloh, mm. even before Jerusalem. So Shiloh was the most the ancient capital mm. of Israel before the Jerusalem. So we have a great, uh, it's a great significance for us. And I think uh, being 10 minutes from Shiloh for us, uh, first of all, we are happy, we are proud, and we, <coughs> uh, we are very enthusiastic. It helps us yes. spiritually. Well, I think so to my opinion, more, if, uh, if uh, this uh, solution uh, will, uh, will, will, will happen, yeah. um, Basically, the area will stay as a university, but uh, to my opinion, the, uh, all the scientific environment, uh, the, uh, uh, the sci scientific power, the students will be harmed. Mm. Even maybe uh, some of the professors will leave, uh, no probably, longer feel probably comfortable they, being here? Probably they will leave. Uh, m me personally, um, I can be also be affected because I collaborate with many professors. Mm. There are professors, some of them, living just uh, 
not far away from our rail and um, in my opinion I just told you, you can see here we have a holy bible yeah just uh, you know compliments us in, in every in every step that we do what we think mm. we have a um, great respect to that and to my opinion um, all this spiritual uh, effect is very important yes. for our uh, scientific uh, endeavor well you know I, I couldn't agree with you more and the more we travel throughout Israel and all the different branches of, of research and technology that is coming out of here I don't think we can afford to lose what's happening here it's to humanity in general frankly you're absolutely right I can tell you uh, one thing we have here about the 50, 15 thousand students something like three, 350 professors from three professors uh, about 150 for uh, ex USSR uh, we have uh, something like 150 people living uh, professors living uh, uh, around our real in the West Bend as you say okay yeah so it's uh, and we do science mm -hmm. we collaborate with other universities yeah. I'm, I'm, I I I travel three, four times uh, a, a year to give a lectures uh, all over the globe. I'm invited to give a lecture. Mm -hmm. And we have a grant and we do beautiful, very useful to humanity mm -hmm. in necessary science. So uh, I don't think uh, there, is, there should be any reason for backloading us. Uh, to my opinion, it's, it smells a little bit anti-Semitic. Uh, <laughs> a little bit, okay? I, 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 and I, I'm I, trying to be very politically correct. Yes. Well, you, 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 you picked the wrong guy to be politically correct with because I could care less about political correctness. <laughs> Before I leave you, I, d I have to ask one more thing. Sure. What is that? Okay. This one, it looks, it's a shaker. <laughs> okay. It's not That's it? Yeah. I thought there was it's something not, magical. You got a urine sample going, but it's no. A, it's not for making a, sh a shake. Okay? No, okay. But, but it's, uh, we, we, we're doing here the, our uh, conjugates with those cocktails. It's, it's a quite modern um, way of, of synthesis. We call it solid phase synthesis. It's, it's a, a well-known technique, and we utilize this technique for synthesizing uh, in a fast mode. Uh, our um, <coughs> uh, conjugates, and I can tell you, but using but using this simple technique, you see only shaking yeah. with the tubes. We can produce manually about five to ten those conjugates per week. Wow, it's quite huge. Yes. If we, we will have the automated equipment. We can do it hundreds mm. and screen them. So we we it's quite. Uh, quite the money consuming yes. the automation of right. the system we're thinking about that once we will have something um, uh, I would say we will have something uh, in vivo I mean after animal models I think uh, the automation will come and you're most optimistic how soon do you think this will be ready for clinical trials for clinical humans trial. because we use the known drugs already they're done in the market and the carriers that also are in the market and we link them through our platform, I think it will be uh, the time to market will be reduced wow. because we don't need the FDA for the drugs that already yeah. exist. Yeah. Okay? So on the show. A few so years? To, to my opinion, a few years. Instead of 10, 9, wow. 10 years, wow. it can be 3, 4 years. And we might be looking at prostate cancer, pancreatic oh cancer, God. which is so devastating. And it could be over. We say with the, with the, with the God help. Thank you for all of your help and being such a great scientist. You're, you're too smart for your own good. <laughs> and this is when I, you know, there's a... Is that like the DNA? This is like the chromosomes. Mm. Mm -hmm. Okay, all the chromosomes. Yeah. And this is all the, this is from a, a tumor biopsy. Oh. How did you have the original DNA to compare? Um, we work with collaboration uh, with uh, Children Hospital, mm. with Schneider uh, Medical Center. Okay. And uh, we have, um, we get the, the neurosurgeon, they uh, gave me the, the biopsy from the surgery. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I get the DNA from it in the lab over there. And then I send it for uh, next generation sequencing. And then from the sequencing, I get a lot of data. So, so this is so where the computer uh, gets in. So you're saying that what you were given, you could accelerate its its changes just by using the computer model it would it would yeah, do that on yeah you know the changes of a person 
it's it's really personalized medicine because but how, how would it anticipate how it's going to change how would it know how would it I so you have the original yeah well how, why would it know where the changes are going to occur or the uh, defects or the okay we compare the the sequence that mm -hmm. we get from the test to uh, a reference genome Oh, okay. And then we can know where are the changes, and then we need to know uh, to filter which are the changes that are relevant and okay. which are not. And it's for cancer. This is for cancer. Always. That's why it's really you're not supposed to see that many changes oh, in, a, in okay. a normal. Yes. Because S it's uh, cancer, you see many many changes, and you're it's right. very bad for. Very the person. bad yeah, for you. Yeah. We but just want to. for the person, not for we me. We want to straighten out all those red lines and just make make. No, them I I use this. I showed you like the end, but yeah. if we come back to the start, uh, my research is about uh, brain tumors in children. Oh, and it's called bioinformatics? Informa Informatics. Okay. Yeah. So is it a new field? And it's, um, you can say it's probably... Okay. It's, it's a and you invented it? It's a growing it. field. You invented it out of no. whole cloth? No. No? no. <laughs> well, well, then we're leaving. I thought you were the inventor. I'm no, kidding. no. <laughs> joking. Uh, so... What have you uh, discovered so far? I mean, is, is it, is, are you finding that this is going to accelerate uh, our understanding of how tumors are going to alter or whatnot because the computer can sequence it faster through time? Is that what we're looking at? Um, what we're looking at, our goal was to uh, help those children when they, uh, um, after they get the treatment, yeah. they have a high uh, chance to get recurrence of oh the okay. disease malignant. Yeah. So we want to detect those cells in the, the cerebrospinal fluid. Mm -hmm. okay? They do a lumbar puncture in the, I, in the hospital, and mm -hmm. then they give me uh, some of the liquid. And I check the DNA in there, and I compare it yeah. in a personalized manner. So I get the DNA from the original biopsy, from mm. the brain, mm. from the tumor, and then I compare it to the DNA that is in the, in the fluid, mm. and I see if if it's cancerous or not, yeah. and then I can know if they have recurrence or not, and it's very important for the oncologist to know, yeah. because they need they need early detection yeah. and uh, accurate so detection. So you're actually so detecting it before it happens. Not before it happens. Before they can know with uh, the what they have today, the test that oh. they have today. Okay. We want to improve the detection, want <laughs> so the oncologist would know when to give the right. Um, so as this continues to develop and get more sophisticated, yeah. what is this going to be able to give the medical field that we don't have right now? Uh, I can give you another example. So this, the, the tumor that I work with uh, called medulloblastoma. Mm. It's a very, um, uh, it's, it's very deadliest. Uh, aggressive. Aggressive, yes, aggressive tumor. And uh, those who survive, they have uh, high recurrence, as I said. And um, recently, they discovered that the tumor is not just one tumor, although the surgeon, when they cut it out, it looks like the same uh, tumor, but uh, genetically, it had like four subgroups, mm -hmm. four biological subgroups that have a specific profile. Mm. So and that was newly that discovered? And, uh, no, that discovered by others, okay. but I want to use these uh, profiles on our patients, oh. and then we can know which one belongs to each uh, subgroups, and then the doctor can lead the the therapy uh, according to that. Okay. So they will treat uh, the patients uh, more accurately and okay. more. They have a high quality of life and don't suffer from over treatment or or the other way. They have less treatment. They they. I understand they that. Now is this kind of. Uh, 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 are you like the only person or in this university doing this kind of research, or yeah, is this I yes? Think so, yeah. so you're it, mm -hmm. and and uh, and also in the hospital because the oncologists today they don't have this test in the hospital. I show her that, and then she she started to say it's really important, and she's trying to uh, insert insert it to the so to you the kinda protocol you, of the you're hospital. kind of revolutionizing yeah. their field that they didn't even realize they had access to this potential. So yeah. that's kind of you're like a, a, a trailblazer. Yeah. <laughs> so you're a genius. You could say that. <laughs> I did <laughs> say <you>. that. <laughs> it's okay. Well, that's wonderful. Uh, unfortunately, whenever we talk about good things, we always have to look at the, the negative challenges. 
being where you are located, West Bank, because of the, the way this mm -hmm. university is, uh, you know, precariously positioned, um, mm -hmm. with this BDS movement that people have, uh, have uh, been fostering in Europe and, and others, um, what, can you tell people what kind of tragedy would come to the humanity in general, forget just you or, or this area, when suddenly this gets shut down? because of something they decided against a particular state of uh, country, um, you know, how many lives are going to be lost, right, worldwide? Yeah. How much new research that will come from that, that maybe is going to stop cancer because yeah. yeah. early it's detection? Hard, it's hard to say. I yes. can say that I work uh, all the time with the oncologist. I, uh, I inform her about the things that I find, and she, like, immediately do it. So I see that it really affects on the children. Mm -hmm. and. And if perhaps if you I didn't do it, yeah. nobody else would nobody do it. Nobody would do it. So and do you get also two. grants or re, uh, research grants sometimes for something like this? So funding yeah, also helps from it? the yeah. Israeli government. Okay. Uh, but, you know, if you were looking for that through some other philanthropic group or so forth uh, that suddenly had to boycott, mm -hmm. no. you can't go any further. No. <laughs> so, again, you know, it's costing humans in general, not just here. So I think that's the short-sightedness is what we're trying to show about what's going on. I mean, you're just minding your own business, trying to do some good, yeah. and the political structure uh, decides that it's going to yeah, focus on some food. science uh, is borderless. Mm. It doesn't mean, doesn't, important, the, the right. politics doesn't need right. to, to interrupt the research. Right, and as you c complete this, you're not going to, patent it and keep it to yourself, no. uh, you're going <laughs> to share with the world. Because that's yeah. what Israelis do, it's part of your DNA, I think. Yeah. And I use the word DNA because you happen <laughs> to be an expert. Yeah. <laughs> well, I want to say thank you for showing thank us uh, what you're doing and for breaking ground. And if, if I get a myoblastic tumor, I'm calling you. <laughs> I hope you don't get it. I do too. <laughs> and if <laughs> thank you. Okay. So. You know, I'm, I'm trying to get out of this place. I'm mm. interviewing somebody, and here you show up. You say, you know what, I, I'm fine. I don't need to be interviewed. But then I get mm. talking to you. You're doing mm. some very unique research mm -hmm. on a problem that is worldwide, uh, in any type of military scenario, PTSD. Mm. But can you just briefly say what this unique uh, mm. research is? Yeah. Uh, we've got a, a model, in, an animal model, using mice that basically uh, we were able to do selective breeding for 27 generations now, such that we found, we separated two populations. One of them is sensitive to stress, and the second one is resistant to stress. Now, in, in, innately? Yes, innately. Oh, okay. Innately. We know from, from, the day of the, from their, their very day of birth, we know by virtue of their, of their lineage which ones are sensitive to stress and which ones are resistant. And you, were in this w and you find this data through s DNA, through some kind of... Uh, through, through behavior. Through oh, behavior. Okay. We, we, s we expose them to stress and we, can, we oh. get their tests for anxiety-like behavior, okay. depressive-like behavior in, in mice yeah. that, that we can... Uh, we, we see that those who are resistant, they doesn't change a thing, the, the stress doesn't change a thing by them, whereas the, the sensitive ones, they, 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 uh, they fail to enjoy um, uh, sweet Cheese. drink. Uh, 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 also, also they, uh, actually, there, there's a test <laughs> okay. for, uh, for uh, a competition test for um, sweetened milk, and, uh, and those, those they, they, they don't even compete for mm. the sweetened milk. They let the, the, the other guy uh, drink all the time, and they, they're just, they're reclusive. They, 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 they almost they're like they gave up on life. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. All right. And so this is something that you would want to bring to to uh, neuro psychology, maybe, or to the military specifically. Uh, I think I think not not just military, but also I think across the across the board. I yeah. think people. I mean, there's a lot of a lot of uh, stress causers in in everyday life. There's a mm. lot of stressful uh, occupations out there. And if we could get to the point where we can know based on a gene simple genetics test, genetic mm. test, uh, who uh, carries the you know, genetic uh, markers of uh, sensitivity to, to stress, I think wow. we could uh, save a lot of unnecessary suffering. Now, how would you then go about trying to remedy that? Would this be something through a, a, a drug of some yeah. kind that would alter the, the imbalance? Or is this something that has to be done through some kind of DNA altering? That, that depends on what we'll find. Mm. Uh, 
I mean, uh, th you don't th know th yet. Yeah. yeah, I mean, those questions will be for, if not the student that comes after me, right. or perhaps the, 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 those will come uh, in years to come. Also, work to be done in drug companies doing that. Yeah. Uh, that's uh, further so, down the road. So, as much as we think of PTC, obviously, in military, though, mm. may, you're saying this probably could apply to just sort of stress in general. Obviously, another mm. billion dollar industry is uh, anxiety medicines and depressive yeah. medicines. So, maybe this can yeah. alleviate even that uh, problem. Because yeah. that's not fixing the people, it's just letting them yeah. endure. And oh, you're trying yeah. to see about actually bringing them back to normality, I'm guessing. Yeah, I mean, that's the, that, uh, that's the hope. I mean, we do, I mean, PTSD is a very, very extreme example, whereas uh, we know that everyday stressors can be a trigger for anxiety disorder.